Hi, my name is Alexander Rath and I'd like to welcome you to our presentation on Variance Aware Path Guiding. Now, as you probably know, path guiding is a great technique to accelerate your sampling, like demonstrated here in this pool scene. However, there's also some scenes where it's not as beneficial, for example the necklace scene. What we're going to present to you today is a technique that's both trivial to implement and causes you no computational overhead, but can greatly improve your guiding in challenging situations like the one depicted here. But before we get into the details, let's take a step back and look at the basics of path guiding. Now, path guiding is based around the idea that you want to learn your important sampling from samples that you've seen earlier. Consider the scene depicted here. We've got a camera that's looking at an object which is illuminated both directly by the light source as well as indirectly through another object. Now what path tracing would do to estimate how much light is being reflected towards our cameras, it would shoot rays, it would shoot rays in random directions, hoping to find a light source at some point. Now in reality, most rays will actually not end up at any light source. They will essentially just waste time. What guiding does to mitigate this is it looks at samples that we've already seen to build a distribution that we can then use to focus our following samples on the regions where they actually matter most. Now, obviously this raises the question, what exactly is the distribution that we want to learn? As you probably know, an optimal important sampling strategy would be one that's proportional to the integrand of the integral that you're trying to solve, which would mean our distribution should look like this. However, there's a problem with this distribution, and that's that it's seven-dimensional. There's three dimensions for space, two for the direction we're coming from, and two di dimensions for the direction that we're trying to sample. And this can make this distribution very hard to approximate and memory intensive to work with. Now, there has been some works that try to split this into an approximation of radiance and of reflectance. But evaluating the product of these approximations on the fly can be very costly to sample, which linders the benefits of their improved sampling. A different strategy that's more common and very popular is to just drop the BSDF and cosine part completely, which frees you from an entire parameter of your distribution, leaving you with a distribution that's only five-dimensional, which is simpler to learn and less memory intensive to work with which is why it has been a popular choice for many guiding algorithms. However, this distribution doesn't come without problems. For instance, it makes a few assumptions to be optimal. One of the assumptions that it makes is it assumes that all surfaces in your scene have to be diffuse in order for it to be optimal. Now, for most scenes, that's obviously not the case. Also, it assumes that all following sampling decisions would be optimal. They have to be zero variance for this distribution to be optimal as well. And last but not least, this distribution also assumes that it can be learned perfectly for each point in your scene, which is, practically speaking, also typically not possible. Now, what we want to do with our work is, given such a five-dimensional local distribution, is we want to ask the question whether we can find a different function to approximate with which we can do better, using the same constraints, using the same uh, representation. Now, to answer this, we propose viewing this as an optimization problem, where the goal is that this target function will minimize some error metric of our image. Now, I'm going to spare you the exact details of the derivation, as you can find it in all this glorious detail in our paper. What I'd like to do today is, I'd like to show you what the sol solution looks like for minimizing the relative mean square error. And here it is. Now, I agree it looks quite overwhelming. There's lots of factors going on here. So I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that at its core, this is still based on the same idea of collecting radiance estimates and then averaging them, like many popular guiding algorithms do today. However, there's a few additional factors. And I'd like to take the time to motivate each of them one by one, starting with the second moment. Now, consider the scene depicted here. We've got a diffuse floor 
which is illuminated directly by sunlight, as well as indirectly through the reflection of the sun in a glass pane. Now, what ordinary guiding would do in the scene is it would notice that the sun has a very high contribution and its reflection has a relatively low contribution. So it will send most samples directly towards the sun. However, this causes a problem because the glass pane itself does a random decision as well on whether to refract the ray or whether to reflect it. Now, this random decision is typically unguided, which means it can also cause high amounts of noise. In other words, in this scene, for the few samples that we shoot towards the glass pane, even fewer actually manage to reach the sun, which means that those that do cause very high values, which manifest themselves as outliers that slow down our convergence. Now, by using the second moment, which essentially just means by squaring our estimates before averaging them, and then taking the square root of the average, we're actually focusing our sampling on the regions that cause high variance, or in other words, the glass pane in this scene, which means we're avoiding these outliers that can be caused by approximation errors in your guiding distribution or unguided decisions like shown here. Next up is the BSDF and cosine. To understand why this is important, consider the VHMIS scene depicted here. Now this scene consists of many glossy materials of varying roughness, which are illuminated by these four light sources here. Now for the spot that we've marked down here, guiding would see that all of these light sources emit light towards that point. So it will also try to sample all of these light sources. However, this creates a problem because the glossy surface actually only mostly reflects the light on the left side, which means the other samples will essentially also just waste time and we are left with a, with a render that's very noisy. Now, by multiplying with BSDF and cosine, we're actually taking the average reflection node into account, which means we're focusing our guiding only on the light sources which are actually being reflected well leaving us with an, with an image that's way smoother and faster to converge. Then, next up, there's also throughput. Now, to understand why throughput is important, let's take a look at the reach door scene. Now, we've marked a spot here on the door which can be very challenging for path guiding. That's because the door is very shallow, which means both of its sides can actually end up in the same guiding cache, which means they have to share a guiding distribution. That's problematic because these two sides have very different lighting situations surrounding them. Now, ordinary guiding solves this conflict by essentially just preferring whatever is brightest. Or in other words, it will give more weight to the backside of the door. But that's a problem. It can cause levels of noise that just are necessary. But by taking the throughput into account, we're actually telling path guiding that it shouldn't just focus on whatever is brightest, but it also should focus on what's important to, us, to our image. In this case, the front side of the door, which leaves us with an image that's less noisy and over its entire image, it's around twice as fast at converging. Last but not least, there's also the division by pixel estimate. Now, to understand why this is important, let's take a look at the reach MIS scene again. Now I've marked here a guiding cache, which contains the reflection of the small light source on the left. Now, since this small light source is very bright, guiding will essentially focus on all sampling nearly exclusively on this light source. That on its own isn't a problem. However, there are also some adjacent points around this highlight, which are also in this guiding cache. And they are also forced to exclusively sample this light source which can create a problem, as for them, other light sources might also be important, leaving us with artifacts around these bright highlights. But by dividing by the pixel estimate, we're actually instructing guiding to minimize a relative error instead of an absolute one, which means we're instructing it to pay just as much attention to darker areas as to brighter ones which helps us also sample these other light sources, which are more important for the darker regions, and leaves us with an image that's free of this artifact and visually more appealing. Now, with all of these factors, you might think that our distribution is probably very hard to implement, but that's not actually the case. For example, in 
the practical path guiding code base, it only takes three lines of code to implement our distribution. But it's enough of the technical details. Let's take a look at some results. I'd like to get started with two handpicked scenes, which again show the benefits of our distribution, but now in a more practical context. Starting with the glossy kitchen scene. Now, this scene, as the name suggests, contains many glossy materials. As we've seen earlier, they can be challenging for path guiding, as path guiding is tempted to sample light sources that aren't actually being reflected, which can actually cause guiding to perform worse than path tracing in many regions of the scene. Now, by incorporating the BCF and cosine in our distribution, we are actually able to um, focus our sampling on the light sources that are most important, giving us an image that's around nearly twice as fast at converging. Next up is the necklace scene, which we've seen earlier. This scene contains a very challenging caustic. Now this caustic is caused by a similar situations, uh, situation to what we've seen when talking about the second moment guiding where rays have to decide on whether to refract or reflect. And in this case, that happens inside of this diamond here in the back, which produces this caustic. Now, the problem here is amplified because there are several internal reflections until this caustic is actually produced. And each of these uh, internal reflections is a random decision that is typically unguided, meaning that it causes severe levels of noise. But with second moment guiding, we are actually noticing that there is noise here and focusing our sampling primarily on the diamond, which helps us significantly speed up the convergence of this caustic and also speed up the convergence of the entire image as a whole. But those aren't the only scenes that we've tested. We've actually evaluated our distribution on a corpus of 22 test scenes and we've plotted the relative um, speed up over um, a radiance based approach in this plot, depending on how much time you spend training your guiding distribution. And as you can see, for very short training times, we're actually slightly worse than radiance-based guiding. That's because our density can be a bit harder to approximate due to the additional factors that can cause noise. And also because guiding caches at the beginning of training are not as robust. Now, that means our method isn't suited very well for interactive previews. However, it's highly beneficial for longer renders, as you can see on the right of this plot, where we achieve average speedups of around 60%, and for some scenes even being twice as fast or three times as fast. Now, you can find all of the results in our supplemental material, but we've also evaluated some further use cases, which I'd like to shortly go over. Starting with direct illumination guiding in the method proposed by Vivola and colleagues. Now, this method already takes second moment into account uh, when selecting light sources. However, we have shown that by also incorporating the BCF and cosine, like we do in our distribution, we are actually able to improve, improve performance even further, especially on glossy surfaces. Next up, there's BCF selection probability optimization, pro proposed by Müller and colleagues. Now this method already takes the BCF into account but we have shown that by incorporating the throughput as well, like in our distribution, we are able to reduce artifacts that can occur in some special cases, like the Cornell box shown here. Now, last but not least, there's also product path guiding, where we've shown that even though product path guiding takes the BCF already into account, there can still be noise due to approximation errors in the guiding distribution or even unguided decisions like in the necklace scene for which it makes sense to also take the second moment into account. Now, obviously, there's also some work that's left to do. For instance, it would be interesting to see if we can improve the robustness of our distribution for shorter renders or even interactive previews by employing a technique maybe similar to what Fivoda and colleagues do with their Bayesian priors. Also, it would be interesting to see how we can adapt our distribution to the bidirectional setting, like with Borba's uh, Gaussian mixture model works. And then, last but not least, it would be very interesting to see if we can also make fitting of second moments more robust for parametric mixture models, like Gaussian mixture models or Van Mises Fischer distributions, like presented at SIGGRAPH this year. Now, that's all the content I've got for you today. With that, I'd like to conclude this presentation. 
And the main thing that I'd like you to take away from this presentation is that choosing a good target function is equally as important as choosing a good representation to approximate it. We've shown this for the five-dimensional case that minimizes uh, relative mean squared error. However, um, and we've shown that um, you can achieve significant speedups with only three lines of code. However, you can still apply the same concept also to other distributions or any error metric that you want. I'd also like to encourage you to check out our paper where we've got some additional insights like on how to deal with multiple importance sampling. And last but not least, I'd also like to encourage you to check out our open source implementation um, of our distribution on GitHub. Now, with that, I'd like to thank all of the amazing people who were involved in this work, especially the TÜV Stiftung for funding parts of this project, Mira Niemann for help with figure design, and Eric Johnson for doing our fast forward voiceover, as well as numerous people for providing us with test scenes to evaluate our distribution on. That's all from my side. I'd like to wish you a great SIGGRAPH this year. And with that, have a nice day. Bye.